I'm going to begin my still life the way I normally would, by deciding whether to use either a horizontal or a vertical orientation. The way I do that is to measure my still life from one side to the other and compare it to the height. If the width of the still life is longer than the height, use a horizontal orientation. If the height is longer than the width, use a vertical orientation. I'm going to use the pair to measure the general proportions of my still life. So I'm going to measure the pair side to side and see how many times it fits across. Once, twice, three times, four times, a little bit more than five times. I want a little bit of space on this side, so I'm going to plant my pair right about here, like this. I want to leave room on the bottom because I know the book is considerably lower. And let's start sketching in our objects. Uh, gather information about each one and then start moving across. So for the pair, let's measure the width. Let's compare it to the height. The height is ever so slightly longer. Let's start the pair here. And I think the width fits one and a little bit more than one into the height. Sure enough, okay, so here's a general proportion of my pair, like this. And let's sketch it in. Keep your sketch simple. You don't want to commit to anything until you're absolutely certain everything is in the right place, the right proportion, and usually the only way to see it is by drawing all the objects. All right, now let's start moving across. Let's figure out how far up our vase is. It runs to right about here. I'm using a horizontal alignment to figure, to figure that out. Uh, let's figure out what the distance between the middle of my vase and the edge of the pair. So I'm going to line up my pencil with the edge of the pair and the middle, the plumb line of the vase, and then compare it into the pair. It looks like it falls ever so slightly short of the pair. Okay, so here is the middle of my vase. We know it starts here. We can use the pair height to see how many times it fits all the way up. Let's do that. Fits once, fits twice, once, twice, one and a quarter times. Once, here's twice, and here's a quarter. Okay, so based on the size of this pair, this is the height of my vase. Once, twice, okay, I'm going to say about two and a half times, I mismeasured. Once, Here's twice. Yeah, let's do it right about here. Um, guys, in this case, uh, you can start off with a medium, but because working on toned paper, uh, you might want to jump directly into your soft. Uh, the harder pencils, the medium pencils, might not do as good a job showing up on this gray tone. All right, uh, <clears throat> we've already drawn this phase. Uh, we need to gather information about it. Uh, let's figure out the plumb line, which you already have, how wide our ellipse here is. Uh, by the way, we could also use our horizontal and vertical alignment to get that right. The more objects you have down, the easier time you're going to have measuring because there's going to be a lot more ways to measure. All right. Let's get the general proportion of our ellipse here. It looks like it's one, two, three, maybe about a third of the width here. So here's approximately a third. There's a third, drop it down. And now you can sketch in your ellipse. Again, make sure that your ellipses are touching at all four corners. What else? Well, we can figure out where these things start, the sides. We can figure out where this little ball ends, right about here, right? Um, I'm not going to go too into measuring right now. Uh, we've got a lot to talk about. Um, but basically, sketch in all your objects. Make sure you're using a good balance of positive and negative space. Uh, once objects are sketched in, then I'll show you how to render this thing. Okay? so. Good luck. Uh, I'll see you when I've sketched in the still life in the next tutorial.